I just want to drop one thing in your heart about Kairos, okay, about right time, right place this year. The thing that he wants us to do, and this is what he said to me very strongly. He says, my people need to learn to pray and get more into prayer. Now, the moment I say that, some of you are saying, oh, you know, it's very hard. I don't have the time and all that because you have this religious idea about prayer. Your idea of prayer is that one hour prayer or two hours prayer, like you hear some men of God, they kneel down there, they pray for one, two hours and three hours or whatever it is. And there's no way I can do that, Pastor Prince. No, I'm talking about communication with God. The, one of the most outstanding things that the disciples saw about Jesus is that at any time, he, He'll talk to God. And one time they were persecuting Him and all the, He was talking about the cities that rejected Him. Chorazin, Bethsaida, Capernaum and all that. At that moment, he lift up his eyes and he says, Father, I thank you that you've hidden these things from the wise and the prudent of the world, but you've revealed them unto babes. He prays his father and he turned to his disciples and said, come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden. While he was being persecuted, while he was being rejected by all these towns and villages, amen, he was rejoicing, talking to the father and then looking at the disciples and says, Come unto me, all you that labor. Oh, the beauty of the man. Amen? Amen? Some of us will be crushed. Uh, I pray to you another time, Lord. Now I'm just crushed. Right? And, and they saw very freely he can talk to God. Anytime, even when you're driving. But pastor, I must close my eyes. Don't! <laughs> so all these religious ideas come into your mind. Amen? And, and, and... I want to say this, okay, listen carefully, especially for this church and those that are following this ministry. Do you, do you know that you can even allow the knowledge of grace to stop you from praying? Because you'll say, it's by grace. Like, grace will happen. Grace, you know? No, no, no. Grace is the idea you cannot, but the Lord can. It is actually conscious weakness. You will always, your, your place of strength before God your place of power before God is conscious weakness. But don't stop there. If you're oh, I'm, so, I'm so weak, I'm so weak, I'm so weak. No, no, don't stop there. But you need to know or else you'll be going around the mountain to learn the lesson that you are weak. You'll find that you fall and fall and fall until you learn that you are weak. People think they are weak, but they're not, they're not weak enough. That's why you cannot save a drowning person too fast. You cannot jump in the water too fast. Why? As long as he, has a, he still has strength, he'll pull you down. You must wait until he's weak. He cannot help himself. He cannot save himself. Then you can save him. We are still quite strong. We think we are, we are weak, but we are not. But we are actually weak. That's why all these all this daily irritations, God allows them to come in <laughs> so that you want to be more like Jesus. One of the best things you can do when you're arguing your spouse and you're impatient and all you can think of is, is her fault, his fault, her fault, his fault, her fault, his fault, is to stop and judge that irritability in you. And tell yourself, I judge that irritableness. Joseph Prince, why are you so irritable? Don't talk about the rightness of the situation. Leave that for a while. Why are you so irritated? Why are you so vexed? Why are you so angry? I don't want that in me. I judge that. And then you realize that has been taken at the cross. Amen. So conscious weakness on one hand and then dependence on God, on Christ. These are the twin, this is a power twin for victory in your life. So Genesis 24 is this when the servant at the well, he prayed this prayer. Then he said, O Lord God of my master Abraham, Please give me success this day and show kindness to my master Abraham. So we all know the story, or you heard the story for the past uh, few messages that we have shared. Uh, the servant doesn't know which girl, the village has a lot of young girls, and they're all coming out at the same time to take water. Uh, usually they have two timings, early in the morning and uh, in the evening, all right, when it's less hot. And they will all come. So at a time in the evening, the Bible says, the Abraham servant who was sent on an assignment by Abraham to look for a bride for Isaac, right? He sat at the well. He didn't know which girl, right? So he prayed, oh God, give me success. The word there in the Hebrew is kara. Kara, all right? Which is right happening. Right happening. Good happening. Fortunate happening. The world calls it serendipity. 
All right? You happen to, happen to chance upon a favorable opportunity. Amen? That is what God, uh, uh, Kara is all about. Right time. Right place. That's Kara happening to you. So he prayed for Kara. Give me a right time. Do you know God actually stopped for some reason? God actually stopped all the young ladies from coming out? That while he was praying, he didn't finish his prayer yet. He told God, the woman that will come and offer me water, the young woman that will come and offer me water, he thought that there would be many, many women that come and draw water, but the one that comes, Lord, the one that come and offer me water, and not only me, me water, but all my 10 camels. And one camel, 30 gallons minimum water. Imagine, she will also give them water. She is the one that you have appointed. He made it hard. But while he was still speaking, before he finished speaking, the Bible says, before he had finished speaking, show them verse 15. And it happened before he had finished speaking that behold, Rebecca appeared. So I want you to know something. We learned that prayer is mentioned with Kara. Prayer is mentioned. And it's not a long prayer. If you count the, the, the length of the prayer, some of the most powerful prayers, short prayer. Yes, we have instances of Jesus praying through the night. Amen. We have instances of, of, of a certain uh, protracted prayer in the disciples' lives. We have a corporate prayer. They all pray together. But most of the prayers you see are short prayers. You can the prayer that Jesus taught His disciples, our Father who art in heaven. You can't, if a stopwatch, it's fast. But this idea, religious idea, you've got to spend hours in prayer, is not from God. At one time, we made a law out of one hour prayer. I still remember that. I tell you, I, I, I put a clock there. I started praying. I thought, oh, I don't know, one hour already. I look at my clock, 10 minutes. <laughs> but we don't do that. We were talking to our, our, our good friend, you know, um, in a cafe. We sit down there. And then we always say what? Wow, the hours just fly. How do you think God feels? <laughs> you know, it's, the, conver it's com prayer's conversation with God. Amen. So you don't just dream, oh, by grace, I'll have success. Like, you know, by grace, I'll have success. Did you pray? I said, did you pray? Oh, I'm going to talk to my son afterwards. You know, he did something just now. Did you pray? That God will give you wisdom, favor with him, that your words will go deep. Did you pray? It's a small thing to pray. God is telling us, this is conscious weakness that I cannot convince him, but you only you can. This is a conscious weakness and dependence on God, dependence through Christ, that you will get through to him. Amen. Oh, yeah, I, 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 you got to make an important decision. You know, in fact, I was confronted with a number of important decisions to make, you know, for, for, for someone else even. I got to ask God, God, give me wisdom. But if I think that I'm smart, oh yeah, you know, let's go with the pros and the cons and the pros and the cons. And all the pros and cons cannot put you at the right time at the right place. We need to depend on the Lord. So the amazing thing is that before he had finished speaking, Rebecca appeared. So even when you are praying, God has answered. So God is outside the time zone. He sends the answer that you're going to pray later on on, in, on this earth. He sends the answer before you pray because He knows you will pray. What do you think? Rebecca was cooking. Yeah, put in some turmeric, put in some chili powder. Well, so, oh, it's a very spicy food. All right, she's cooking and all that. Ah, I have, no, no watch. I have to go uh, in 10 minutes time. Look at a sundial. Uh, 10 minutes time, I have to go and uh, take water and all that. Then poop, she disappeared. Then <laughs> poop, she appeared in front of the well and the the elderly man is down there praying. You think it happened like that? No. God always sent the answer. Put the, put the desire in her heart. All right? And put the desires in all the other women, uh, young women's heart. All right? No, I have to do other things. I, I, I'm very busy. I cannot go to the well today. A brother can go to the well. Uh, some, you know, something like, something like that happened. So God was answering prayer before it was prayed. So the prayer that He put in, in your heart to pray, you think you are praying, but actually He put it in your heart to pray the prayer that He wants you to pray. And the answer is on the way. There's a beautiful promise here in Isaiah 65. It shall come to pass that before they call, I will answer while they are still speaking. And that's what happened to Abraham's servant. While they are still speaking, I will answer. You know what Jesus said when he taught on prayer? Whatever things you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. Wait, wait, wait. When do you believe you receive them? When you see it happen? When you touch it? You can feel it in your body? You can see it outside when the manifestation comes. When? When you stand praying, Mark 11, 
verses, verse 24, when you stand praying, believe. What, sorry, one more time. What things soever you desire, when you pray, believe you receive them and you shall have them. So when, when do you believe you receive? While you're praying. Is this, while they're still speaking, I will answer. I believe that when I pray, God answers. You gotta have that posture that, you know, you are, you are redeemed by the blood of Jesus. Again, all these religious thoughts and all that, you know, you gotta find out your sin before you can talk to God, before God can hear you and all that, you know, and, and, and your unconfessed sin, right? That's why I'm, I'm telling you, this kind of consciousness can rob you of a prayer life. You gotta know that you're forgiven of all your sins. Amen. And thank God for that. True confession is homologia, to say the same thing with God about our sins. What did God say about our sins in the new covenant? They are all forgiven by Jesus' blood. Confess that. The more you believe that, you won't fall into sin, I'm telling you. Because you won't be sin conscious. Before you fall into sin, you are sin conscious. Okay? Pray. God hears your prayer. You're a child of God. Pray. Every situation, pray. Be, be like, every day, it's not so much of hours of prayer. It is like the whole day, right? Any situation comes up, you are praying. You find you are lacking or something. Pray. That pain I felt in my body, Pastor Prince, can you pray for me? Did you pray? I felt it this morning, you got no time to pray. You got no time to pray. You got time to eat or not? <laughs> you got time to go to the toilet or not? When you feel the urge, you do it, right? Right? Prayer is so simple. God is so close. Nothing. That, you know, you got to demolish all these religious thoughts. You must get close to God. You must get close to God. You are so close already. You are in Christ. You know, where are you not? Seated in Christ at the Father's right hand. So sometimes in times past, when I pray, Father, like God is so far away. Father, Father in heaven. I'm, 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 I'm trying to sight myself into a, a place where I think that I'm, I'm close to God. It never works. The more I try to be close to God, the more further I am. Because why? It's a negation of the truth. And the spirit of truth cannot bear witness with a lie. When, when he has, when he has, let me put it this way. When I'm already in Christ, I'm so close to God, the Holy Spirit bears witness with that truth. If I act like I'm so far away, amen, there's nothing for the Holy Spirit to bear witness. It's a lie. So when you act like God doesn't hear a prayer, God is so far away, or I didn't go to church for a few days or whatever, amen, then repent of that and just come back. And thank God they has forgi forgiven you of that sin of not attending physically. Okay, I'm just joking, <laughs> all right? <laughs> you know, I got to slide in all the time, okay? I just don't want you to miss the corporate anointing. Amen, people? Amen. Pray. Amen. And know that while you're praying, not after, while you're praying, God is hearing. 